Brendan Dassey trial transcript, day seven, uh, beginning of Brendan's testimony. Reconvened at 8.34 a.m., jury out. The court. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, counsel. This is State of Wisconsin versus Brendan Dassey, 06 CF 88. Appearances, please. Attorney Fallon, good morning, Your Honor. May it please the court. The state continues in its appearance by special prosecutors Ken Kratz, Norm Gaughan, Tom Fallon. Attorney Freeman. Attorney Mark Freeman appears with Attorney Ray Edelstein. The defendant appears in person. The court. Are you set to proceed, uh, Mr. Freeman? Attorney Freeman. Yes, Judge. We, uh, at this time, our first witness will be the defendant, but we need the court to proceed with the colloquy with Mr. Dassey to ensure that um, he is making the decision freely, voluntarily to testify. The court. All right. Uh, if you'd move the microphone um, over there, Mr. Dassey, can you hear me? The defendant. Yes. The court. Uh, it's my understanding you wish to testify? Yes. You understand that you have a constitutional right to testify? Yes. You have a constitutional right not to testify? Yes. Do you understand that decision whether or not to testify is for you and you alone to make? Yes. That doesn't mean that you can't get advice from family, from friends, from your lawyers, but you understand in the end it's your decision? Yes. Has anyone made any threats or promises to you in an attempt to influence your decision? No. Have you discussed your decision whether or not to testify with your lawyers? Yes. Have you made a decision as to whether or not you want to testify? Yeah. What is that decision? That I want to? You want to testify? Yeah. All right. Uh, let me address counsel. Mr. Freeman, have you had sufficient opportunity to thoroughly discuss with your client uh, the case and his decision whether or not to testify? Attorney Freeman, I can say for the record that we have spoken at least a half dozen times specifically on that one issue um, and recently, as recently as yesterday. The court, are you convinced that he understands the implications of him testifying and not testifying? Attorney Freeman, I believe so. The court, are you satisfied that the decision he announced on the record here is being made knowingly, intelligently, and voluntarily? Attorney Freeman, I don't know if I can answer that question, Judge. The court, well, is... Attorney Freeman, I believe he's, I'm sorry, I believe he knows what he's doing and I believe he's voluntarily agreeing to do it. The court, all right, so it's knowingly and voluntarily being made? Attorney Freeman, yes, Judge. The court, you're, you're suggesting that uh, it is being made by him and him alone in this instance? Attorney Freeman, that I don't know if I can answer either. The court, all right, the court will find, based on this record, that the uh, decision of this defendant to testify is being made uh, knowingly and voluntarily. The court has uh, had a colloquy with him. The court uh, uh, believes that the defendant has, has made this decision, realize it's his alone to make before I go through this counsel. Attorney Kratz, given Mr. Freeman's, um, the court, reticence? Attorney Kratz, reticence. Uh, perhaps uh, the court should inquire of Mr. Dassey if, if there isn't something else or if there uh, uh, isn't an explanation for, for that. Our concern, as you know, Judge, is to make this complete record. Uh, if the court is uh, reluctant to do so, I certainly understand that, but that was our, our um, the court. I, I understand uh, the state's concern. Mr. Freeman has positively averred that the decision is being made knowingly and voluntarily. I've gone through the colloquy with, with Mr. Dassey. I, I don't know at this stage, uh, absent uh, getting into matters, that uh, I have no business inquiring in I can be doing. Attorney Freeman, if, if I can add, Judge, the court, go ahead. Attorney Freeman, you, you had asked if I thought this was an intelligent decision. The court, correct. Attorney Freeman, and, and not that intelligence is different viewed from, from a legal standpoint than common sense. I, I don't know if I can honestly say that if, there, if, if it's being made based upon um, reasonable and logical uh, decision making. And the court also inquired as to whether Mr. Dassey had talked to others besides ourselves. The court, right. Attorney Freeman, and I'm sure he has. In fact, I know he has, and for that reason, I can't say for certain that the decision is solely his. I can say to you, to this court, that he has told us this is his decision, and he wishes to pursue testifying. The court. Well, let me then re-ask Mr. Dassey. Would you pull the microphone over there? Mr. Dassey, I've told you that, in the end, this decision is yours and yours alone to make, correct? The defendant. Yes. The court. And you understand that? Yes. Uh, you've talked to other people about this other than your lawyers? Yes. Uh, have those, are you being forced to do this in any way, do you feel? No. You're doing this voluntarily? Yes. You understand there may be some risks to your testifying? Yeah. And you're willing to take those risks in testifying? 
Yes. No one's promised you anything in order to get you to do this? No. You're not threatened in any way? No. And this is, in the end, it is your decision, is that correct? Yes. That, that's fine, Judge. Thank you. The court. Yeah, I don't know where else we can go here, so let's, uh, we'll get the jury in and let's proceed. Attorney Kratz. There's one, one other thing, Judge. The, uh, as long as the jury is out, I had promised the court and uh, Madam Clerk that uh, there was a videotape clip of an answering machine that I think that I, I think was on the first day of testimony that we would have a copy of that made and marked to make a part of the record. Over the weekend, we've had an opportunity to make a copy of that, and I just wanted to complete the record by providing a copy of that uh, uh, clip as I had promised early on. The court. Had we previously marked it as an exhibit? Attorney Kratz, no. The clerk, no. The court, all right, so this will be exhibit 225? The clerk, yes. Attorney Kratz, that's all we have, Judge, thank you. The court, all right, specifically, it's an exhibit of, it's a CD of a, a, the clerk, it's a CD of the answering machine. The court, all right. The clerk, clip. The court, all right, we can bring the jury in then. The clerk, so that's received as the court, yeah. Jury in at 8.42 a.m. The court. Morning, ladies and gentlemen. Be seated. Uh, you may proceed. Attorney Freeman. Judge, at this time, we'll call Brendan Dassey. The clerk. Please raise your right hand. Brendan Dassey, called as a witness herein, having been first duly sworn, was examined and testified as follows. The clerk. Please be seated. Please state your name and spell your last name for the record. The witness. Brendan Dassey, D-A-S-S-E-Y. Direct examination by Attorney Freeman. Morning, Brendan. Morning. How old are you, Brendan? 17. Where were you living on October 31, 2005? With my mom. Where exactly was that located? At 12930A Avery Road. What city is that in? Two Rivers. And how long have you lived at that address? Six or seven years. Now, there are others that live around you, is that right? Yes. Is this all family? Yes. Who, who lived, well, who all lived in that general area? Me, my family, Stephen, Chucky, my grandma and grandpa. Who's Chucky? One of my uncles. Okay, so it was all family that lived in that area? Yes. Was it adjacent to some property, a business? Yes. What business was that? The Avery Auto Salvage. Okay, now you said that Stephen, that's your uncle? Yes. And he lived where exactly in relation to your house? Next door. About how far next is next door from your house? A few hundred, hundred or two hundred or three hundred yards away. Do you know yards or feet? Do you know the difference between the two? Not really. Okay, was it farther than a football field away from you? No. So less than a football field away from you? Yeah. Now, who else lived in the house with you and your mom? Me, my brother, my mom. You said your brother or brothers? All three of them. Okay, and who, who are they? What are the names? Bobby, Brian, and Blaine. So your mom and the four brothers all live there? Yes. And how old is Blaine? Ten months older than me. In, real, in the house, in relation to where you slept, where did he sleep? In the same room. You guys shared a room? Yes. What about Bobby? How old is Bobby? Three years older. And did he also have a bedroom? Yes. Did he share with anyone? No. And, and you said Brian also lived there? Yes. And, and where did he, uh, how old is Brian? Four years young, older. So you're the youngest? Yes. On October 31, 2005, were you attending school? Yes. And where did you go to? Mishicot High School. What level grade were you in? At the time? Yes. Tenth. Now, do you know what the difference between mainstream and non-mainstream classes is? Yes. Okay. Were you in the mainstream classes at Mishicot or non-mainstream? In both. Okay. So a little, are some of them non-mainstream? Yeah. It's also, is it also sometimes referred to as special education class? Yes. Okay. What kinds of grades did you receive when you were in school? Usually C's, D's, and F's. Did you belong to any clubs at school? No. Any extracurricular activities at school? No. Did you work while you were going to school? Can you repeat that? Did you work while you were going to school? 
No. So after school, what would you normally do? Usually play video games. Where at? At home. So on October 31, 2005, was it a normal day for you? Yes. And by normal, about what time would you get home, get home from school, the school bus? 3.45. And you did on that day as well? Yes. Was anyone else with you on the bus that day? Just Blaine. Is that normal, you and Blaine take the bus together? Yes. Where does it drop you off at the, uh, um, does it drop you off at your house? No. Where does it drop you off? By our mailboxes. Okay. About how far away is that from your house? About a quarter mile. How long does it take you to get from where the bus drops you off to get to your house? Well, if you walk, it takes five minutes, but if you run, it probably takes you two. Do you normally run home from the bus? Sometimes. On October 31, 2005, did you run or walk home? I don't recall. Now, did you go directly home from getting off the bus that day? Yes. Did you see anyone when you were walking down the bus down to, from the bus stop to your house? No. Other than Blaine, right? Yes. What did you do when you got home that day? I played video games. Do you know what Blaine was doing? He was on the phone. Was that something you talked about beforehand? Yes. Why, why would that topic of conversation come up while you were walking from the bus stop? Because Blaine wanted to use the phone and I wanted to go on the computer. Did you have one connection in the house? Yes. So if someone's on the phone, you can't be on the computer? Yes. Do you know why Blaine needed to use the phone? To call his friend. Do you know why? To go to see if he was going trick-or-treating. So something you guys talked about? Yes. You didn't go want to go trick-or-treating that night? I was deciding if I wanted to. So now you were at home playing video games. You said this is normal for you? Yes. Do you remember what video game you were playing? I believe it was American Chopper. How do you recall or how, why would you think that that's the game you were playing? Because some of the games that we have now are too new. Okay, so that was not a new game at that time? No. How long were you playing video games uh, after you got off the bus at 345? About two hours. What did you do after you were done playing video games? I ate some food. Okay, did you make it yourself? Yes. Where did you go to make food for yourself? In the kitchen. How far from your bedroom is that? 20 feet. Do you know what time it was when you went to make food for yourself? Around 5. How do you know it was around 5 when you went to the kitchen? Because I looked on the, the oven for the time. Okay, was anyone else in the kitchen at that time? Not that I recall. Any time while you were eating? Just Blaine. Okay, and, and uh, what was Blaine doing? He was in the kitchen holding his duffel bag. Was he going somewhere? Yeah. Where was he going? Trick-or-treating. And this is with the same person he talked to on the phone? Yes. Do you remember what time he left? Around 5.20. So when you say you thought it was 5, it was certainly sometime before Blaine left? Yes. Was anyone else home at that time? Just my mom. And, and do, do you know when the time your mom got home? Around 5. Did you ever, did you see her come home? No. How do you know it was around 5? Because usually she keeps her door shut for her bed to her bedroom. Okay, but how would you know then it was around 5 when she got home? She usually comes home from work at that time. There was no reason for you to, well, strike that. The, um, so she normally comes home at 5? Yes. Did you speak with her at all after or while you were eating supper? No. Okay. What did you do after you were done eating? I went into my mom's room and talked to her about that she was, I asked her or she told me that she was going with Scott to the hospital to see his mom. And who's Scott? My mom's fiance. Did you know ahead of time that that might be something she was doing that evening? No. Okay. Did you just learn this was the first time you heard it? Yes. Did you see her leave? Yes. Do you know what time that was? Around 530. And was it before or after Blaine left? After.